What does Christmas mean to you, you guys? To me, it means family, holiday music, and cookies. Hey guys, Kira here from 50 Shades of Mom, back to share another Vlogmas video. And in today's Vlogmas video, I am sharing three Italian cookie recipes. So I'm not sure what your Christmas traditions are. Comment down below, let me know what your favorite holiday tradition is, what you love to do every year. But something that I love to do is bake cookies. Being in the kitchen is my favorite place to be anyways, but this time of year just forces me in there because it's everything that just encompasses this holiday to me. Everything that smells good, everything that tastes good, all the memories. I just love baking cookies. I came from a very small, tight-knit Italian family, and being in the kitchen is just what we enjoyed. So I have three Italian cookie recipes that I'm going to share with you guys today. And on top of all of that, you guys, this is part of what Vanessa is calling a virtual cookie swap. I've always wanted to do a cookie swap. I just never lived in an area where I knew a bunch of people or worked in an office where people do that. But I know that that's like a really super popular thing to do a cookie swap where you have a party or into work. Everybody brings in their cookie and their recipe and everyone gets an opportunity to leave with a bunch of recipes and new cookie flavors that they may fall in love with. Well, when everyone lives all over the world, friends and family, how awesome is it to be able to do a virtual cookie swap so down below in the description box is a whole list of ladies who are participating in this cookie swap and they're all sharing recipes today that have some kind of cookie involved which whether it be a regular cookie a cookie bar some kind of Christmassy cookie so I'm really excited to see what everybody is putting out because I love new ideas and maybe next year or even this year still I'll be able to put a couple of their cookies in my regular routine so let me take you down to the counter and I'm gonna show you how to make three of my family's Italian cookies okay you guys so first up is these Italian ricotta cookies now any of the recipes that I'm showing you guys today I found a comparable recipe on Pinterest so the exact measurements and everything will be listed in the description box below but here's what you're going to need to make these cookies and we're gonna do a glaze and some sprinkles on top so for that glaze you're gonna need some almond extract and then any kind of sprinkles that you want to use and powdered sugar so that's what you're going to need for the top and then the base of the cookie is flour i am using just all-purpose flour in this recipe but i am using a sugar replacement i have some baking powder there some baking soda two eggs two sticks of butter some vanilla and then of course some regatta cheese as i like to say and the best part about baking these cookies you guys is i got to break out my kitchen aid mixer which i definitely don't use enough and i need more attachments i ended up using this wire whisk attachment for most of it although we were making dough i did switch to the dough attachment later on but I need definitely need more attachments like the paddle attachment and so on so in the KitchenAid mixer I just put the two sticks of butter and sugar and I creamed those together first and then I added in the eggs one at a time continuously whipping and then I just added in the vanilla and the regatta cheese and that's pretty much it for your wet ingredients so you're just gonna continuously keep stirring until everything is incorporated through and it's like silky and creamy I did open the top and just use a spatula I went all around the edges just to make sure everything was thoroughly mixed and then in a side bowl I prepared our dry ingredients so that was the all-purpose flour the baking powder and baking soda and then now we're just gonna add that little by little into the mix 
Now, if you don't have a KitchenAid mixer, you can use a regular standard size mixer, but once you get to like three quarters of the way through the mix, you can tell how thick it gets. And so you can either mix the rest with your hands, or this is the time where I should have switched out to the dough hook. But this KitchenAid was a Christmas present to me last year, and I definitely haven't spent the year nailing it like I should have. So you're basically just going to take the dough, you guys, and we're going to just roll it into balls. That's it just simple balls onto the pan and then we're going to prepare the glaze that you're gonna put on top of them so it's just a cup and a half of powdered sugar three tablespoons of milk as long as you don't spill extra in there and then some almond extract you guys that almond extract changes the game so once you mix that up you're gonna come back you'll see I rolled out all of our dough and I got I think almost five dozen cookies out of it and then I came back and glazed the top. The actual directions that I found on Pinterest suggest that you take the cookie and dunk the top of it into that bowl of glaze, but we never did it like that. There's no reason to manhandle the cookie more than you need to, and a brush works just fine. So I used a barbecue brush, I basted the tops, and then I just used the little sprinkles to cover the tops, and you have to do them in sections so that your glaze is still wet. This way your sprinkles stick. So I did one pan at a time where that little pan was little so I went over to the next pan but you have to do it in stages so that your glaze keeps everything still wet and your sprinkles will stick so I did some in red some in red and green and then I did the red white and green little candy dots and they only need to go into the oven for eight to ten minutes uh, these were actually a little bit on the bigger side I probably should have made them a tiny bit smaller so I went to almost 15 minutes on mine to get the proper dough consistency but they were so good now you're gonna leave them on the pan for about three minutes to cool first and then you can move them over to a wire rack for them to cool completely but these were just so so good you guys and it just brought back like all the memories of cooking with grandma so definitely a top-notch Italian cookie in my book Now, if you like that amaretto taste like I do, then this amaretti cookie is going to be right up your alley. And why this one works is because this one is completely keto. So this is a cookie that I'm going to be able to have and it's almond flavored, so it uses almond flour, which is great. You use a pinch of salt. I'm using a sugar replacement. That's my Swerve powdered sugar. There's our almond extract and two egg whites. That's all you need for this recipe, and it's completely low carb, and it tastes amazing, just like an Italian cookie from a bakery. So super easy, and our KitchenAid mixer is back in use, which I'm super excited about. So let's start getting our ingredients into the mixer. First into the mixer is our almond flour, and then we're going to add our sugar replacement and our powdered sugar. That powdered sugar was the perfect sweetness mixed with that regular sugar, and then we're just gonna stir those dry ingredients around, and then I'm going to add in those egg whites and then our almond extract. Like, if you guys love almond, you guys, this is like, almond overload almond extract is very strong and it was just enough with the almond flour to get this really hearty almond taste and then that's it that's the simple dough so once that's done you're going to dump it out onto the counter you don't even need a flour for this and you're just going to put it into a circle and then it tells you to wrap it in saran wrap and put it in the fridge i didn't have saran wrap so i just used a gallon size sandwich bag it says refrigerate for at least an hour but we always refrigerate our dough in our family overnight so i made this the night before and then rolled out the dough the next day so you need a little bit more powdered sugar other than the few tablespoons that you put inside the recipe. You need some in a bowl on the side, and once you roll these amaretti's into a ball, you're going to throw them inside of that powdered sugar and you're going to coat the ball with it. Similar to that like Christmas crinkle cookie, is that what it's called? When you roll it in the powdered sugar and then it cracks 
while it opens. Um, so that's what you're going to do with all of these. You're just going to go through that entire dough. I did mine in stages. So I was doing like five or six pieces at a time. And then you're going to flatten them out when you put them on the cookie sheet. You don't want to leave them completely round because these do not sink. They're literally going to be the size and shape that you see right there on the pan. So once you're dough is all rolled and flattened and put in sugar then we're going to stick them in the oven for these ones were needed to cook for a little while you guys and that's because of the almond flour but this oven i am just getting used to learning so i feel like i should have maybe done it just a tad bit less it's a rental so i'm not really used to the stove and i also feel like the sugar replacement powdered sugar melted off where that's not really supposed to happen if you used regular powdered sugar so my idea was to take the powdered sugar i had left in the bowl i threw it in a gallon size sandwich bag and i went back and threw those cookies in there and re-tossed them in that powdered sugar and that you guys was the perfect addition they look the way they're supposed to look and they tasted the way they were supposed to look so very very delicious and then now you guys we're on to my favorite cookie this is not an overwhelmingly sweet cookie but if you've ever been inside of an italian bakery sesame cookies are very very popular and they're one of my favorite so you're going to need some sugar they wanted whole milk i put heavy whipping cream out because i'm going to do a dash of that you need flour baking powder a full cup of butter which is two sticks two eggs some sesame seeds and some vanilla that's it i am going to go back to my kitchen aid mixer you guys this was by far the best christmas present that i got last year and like i said i did not use it as much nearly as much as i should have this year i need to really nail this thing because this was so helpful for making these cookies so just like our first recipe we're going to cream our sugar and butter together first and then you're going to add in your eggs one at a time it was a little annoying to crack the egg off the side so i put it in the measuring cup I should have done that anyways to avoid shells but I'm pretty good at not losing a shell inside so once you cream your butter and sugar together I opened it up and scraped the sides and then it calls for two tablespoons of milk so I did like one and three quarter tablespoons and then I came back and added like a quarter tablespoon of that heavy whipping cream so that it kind of balanced out that whole milk that they were looking for then I added our vanilla and set the mixer on two to give it a good incorporation then I added our baking powder and once that was all mixed together then it was time for flour so I ended up adding the three and a half cups it calls for three and a half cups I added three cups off camera because my camera was dying and I ended up switching to the dough hook which was perfect timing for that like last half a cup three quarters of a cup of flour that I threw in there and what a difference it was using the dough hook I'm totally going to perfect this as I go on with using this mixer but the dough hook was definitely key you can tell that that's what it needed over that wire whisk and then once it was done mixing we're going to throw it onto the countertop on a floured surface so it doesn't stick to where you're working with and we're just going to knead it for a little bit I did it for like a good five minutes, but what a difference dough makes if it calls for a need and you really work it and give it the good incorporation that you really need to get like a good smooth and silky dough. So once that is all done being kneaded, like I said, I did it for like five minutes. I put it into a bowl and I covered it with a towel and I let it rest for like an hour. And once it was done resting, then I started making the little balls. Now we're going to coat this in some milk and the sesame seeds. And so you really want to roll all of your little balls first. You don't want to like roll the ball and then put it in the milk and then coat because then your hands are covered so I actually took the dough I rolled the entire dough into as many balls as I can get and I actually only got like two dozen and instead I should have gotten three but they're the same size as what it looks like in the picture so I don't really know I know that we used to get roughly this amount when we made this recipe so once I was done rolling these all together then you're going to stick them in a milk bath 
the fact that this wasn't whole milk didn't really change anything. So I didn't add any of the heavy cream into this bowl, but you're going to just dunk those little pieces into the milk and then roll them into the sesame seeds. And then these don't really pipe up or rise too much, a little bit, but they don't, they have a little bit of baking powder in there, but they don't swell so big so you can put them pretty close together on the pan you don't have to worry about them touching each other but you want to make them about three quarters of an inch high and circular or almost like rectangular the way that i'm showing you guys in order for them to cook up to the shape that a true sesame cookie is and so once you're done getting all of those covered on the sheet pan you're going to stick these in the oven for 15 minutes <music> So here these are all cooked up. They seriously are my favorite. Well, next to the tri-colored cookies, but I was always so intimidated about making them because I'm afraid I'm just never gonna make them the proper justice and then I'm gonna spoil it in my mind for me. But these sesame cookies were amazing as well as the regatta cookies and those amaretto cookies, just so delicious. So again, guys, the Pinterest link will be down below if you guys want to check them out and I hope you do. These are like family recipes, family cookies we've been making forever and I know that you guys will enjoy them this holiday holiday season. Also, don't forget to go and check out those amazing ladies who are going to be participating in this virtual cookie swap with me. If you guys are looking for cookie inspiration, you definitely came to the right place. If you guys came over from any of the other ladies channels, welcome. I hope you guys enjoy. Stick around and enjoy some of my other videos. I love you guys all so much and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's vlogmas video. Bye guys.